Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to talk about my top 5 favorite shonen manga. If you've seen the anime related videos that I've made, it may seem that I'm more into shoujo than shonen manga, but it's actually the opposite. I've been reading shonen manga since I was little, and I only began reading shoujo manga when I got into high school. Even now, I still prefer shonen anime and manga to shoujo ones. I just like making shoujo anime related videos more because they are easier to recreate since they only revolve around school stuff and your normal everyday life. And before any of you say something like, Hey! Why isn't my favorite manga listed on this video? Where is insert manga title here? How can it not be on your top 5 list? Unforgivable! I'm gonna unsubscribe! If you look closely at the title of this video, you can clearly see that it says my top 5 favorite shonen manga and not your top 5 favorite shonen manga. If your favorite series is not listed here, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It's just because we have different preferences and that's normal. So please don't get super offended just because your favorite manga is not mentioned here, okay? So at number 5 is Dragon Ball. I think it's safe to say that Dragon Ball has become a huge inspiration to other shonen manga and anime. Like for example, Naruto and One Piece. Dragon Ball was the very first manga that I read as a kid, aside from Doraemon, and it made me fall in love with the world of shonen anime and manga. Yes, I admit, the exaggerated power-ups, the constant deaths and revivals, and also the plot armor can be silly sometimes, but I honestly don't mind them too much because that's just your typical shonen manga. I think most of you guys are already familiar with Dragon Ball, so I don't think I need to summarize the story here. Next at number 4 is Noragami. This is the newest addition to my list. I'm gonna try my best to explain it without spoiling too much. It's about an unknown god named Yato who dreams of becoming a well-known god and having his own shrine. Because of this, he begins granting people's wishes in exchange for only 5 yen, in an attempt to make people know him and remember him as a god. And by granting people's wishes, it's more like doing small jobs for them like fixing their bathtubs, taking care of their baby, etc. During one of his jobs, he meets with a high school girl called Hyori, who gets into trouble because of him, and she ends up following him in his adventure while she waits for him to fix her problem. They later meet a wandering spirit called Yukine, whom Yato makes into his weapon to kill corrupted spirits with. When I first saw this series, I didn't have a high expectation for it. But once I started reading the manga, I immediately fell in love with it. Yato is a very funny character, but once he gets serious, he's like a whole different person. I'm not gonna lie, the main thing that makes me love this series so much is the relationship between Yato and Hiyori. Every time I see Yato blush because of her, I'm like... I think the last time I went this crazy over a romantic relationship in shonen manga was when I read Inuyasha years ago. Look, I even have this Yatari folder full of pictures of Yata and Hiyori together! <laughs> but it's obviously not the only thing that made me fall in love with this series. I also love the other characters as well, also the plot, the art style, the comedy aspect, and the fighting scenes. If you're not bothered with a little bit of fluffy romance in the shonen manga, then I recommend this manga to you. Next is Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul takes place in a world where ghouls, creatures who can only survive by eating human flesh, live among the humans in secret, hiding their true nature to avoid detection by the authorities. Ghouls are several times more powerful than normal humans, and they have at least one special organ called Kagune, which they use as a weapon during battle. Another characteristic of the ghouls is that when they get excited, the colors of their sclera turn black and their irises turn red. I've read the manga and watched the anime, but I prefer the manga because it's a lot darker and gorier as well. But I also like the fact that the manga and the second season of the anime follow different storylines, so even though I had already read the manga before, I could still watch the anime without knowing what was gonna happen next. The thing that I love the most about Tokyo Ghoul is the character development. A lot of the characters went through so much development that it's very apparent if we compare their states at the end of the story with how they were in the beginning. We can see how much they've grown and how the hardships have changed them into the people they are today. I think one of the characters who's had the most development is the main character, Kaneki, who experienced a drastic change in both his physical appearance and personality halfway through the series, which is something that I don't think I've ever seen in a shonen manga before. My favorite character in this series is Suzuya Juzo, as you can see from my current phone wallpaper. It's just so... <laughs> I totally have a thing for characters that have a massive personality transformation from bad guys to good guys. Next is Attack on Titan. This series tells the story of the humans living and hiding within a walled-up community, which protects them from the titans living outside of it. 
The Titans are gigantic, humanoid-looking creatures that seem to have no other desire but to eat people, not for survival reasons but for mere pleasure. This story focuses on Eren, a boy who had to watch his mother die in the Titan's hands when he was little. Since that day, Eren has sworn that he will kill all the Titans in the world. He later joins the military together with his childhood friends, Mikasa and Armin. The thing I like the most about the second Titan is that I can never predict what's going to happen next. Usually, in shonen manga, we can kinda guess what's gonna happen and who will die in the next chapter. But in Attack on Titan, I can never predict who's going to die next and what will happen in the upcoming chapters. It's also it's also refreshing to see a shonen series where the main character is not the strongest character. In Dragon Ball, we know that Goku is the strongest, and in Naruto, we also know that Naruto is the strongest. In Fairy Tail, the main character, Natsu, may not be the strongest, but he always manages to power up all of the sudden during the most convenient moments and is always the one who defeats the final boss just because he's the main character. In Attack on Titan, Eren is clearly not the strongest one as he has been beaten up by the other characters multiple times. Even his sister is stronger than him. And I think it's a nice change to see in a shonen manga. The final manga on my list is not a popular one and you might not have heard of it but it's been my favorite manga of all time and that manga is Kenji. It's about a boy named Kenji Go who studies the Pachichu and martial art with his grandfather at an early age. When he becomes a teenager, his grandfather suddenly disappears. He then goes on a journey to find his grandfather. On his way to find his grandfather, he learns other martial arts to complement his skills. Along the way, he encounters many new friends who help him with his martial arts studies. He also has to face a lot of enemies and has to become stronger to defeat them in order to proceed on his journey. This is quite an old manga and I got the full set from my cousin. It was published back in 1988 and completed in 1992. A lot of people might get turned off by the art style because it's very realistic unlike the anime style we're used to seeing today. However, I still haven't found a manga that can take Kenji's place on my list. I love this manga so much that it even inspired me to learn martial art as well. Turns out all of my Aikido friends love this manga too and I'm not the only one who got inspired to learn martial art because of this manga. If you love martial arts and don't mind reading a manga with realistic story and art style, then I highly recommend this manga to you. So those were my top 5 favorite shonen manga, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you're wondering why I didn't put some manga on this list even though I put them in my favorite anime list, it's because I like the anime better than the manga and vice versa. For example, Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter. I much prefer the anime because the battle scenes are more detailed and exciting to watch compared to the manga and I like the art styles better as well. And now, as always, I have a question for you guys. What are some of your favorite shonen manga? Leave your answers in the comment box below because I would really love to read them all. By the way, you guys will have to wait a bit more for the shonen anime cliche video because I've been and I'm still busy preparing myself for an upcoming test and interview, so I don't have time to make that video now. It may look like a simple video, but in reality, it takes a long time to make because I have to do everything by myself. So please be patient. The video will come, but not right now because I currently have other priorities I need to focus on in real life. Before I end this video, I would like to thank Lucia and Rie, or Rai, sorry for butchering the pronunciation, for giving me their fan arts. It's so cool to see you guys actually spend your time to draw me. I can't even get my best friend to draw me, even though I've basically forced her to do it. So thanks a lot for your drawings, guys. I really love them. So that's all from me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video, and thank you for those of you who have subscribed to me. If you haven't, then please be sure to click on the shiny subscribe button below. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends if you enjoyed watching it. And I will see you on my next one. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye bye. Tokyo Ghoul takes place in a world where ghouls, creatures who can only survive by eating human flesh, while their irises turn, oh, turn black. We can see how much they've grown and.